Hi again. In this video, I will present four forms of inquiry that shows how inquiry-based learning is often realized in practice. At the beginning, I want to, you to observe that these forms of inquiry are moving from a lesser to a greater student engagement. In other words, the further a student gets in their learning, the more responsibility they can take for their learning process, while the role of the teacher becomes smaller. For example, when writing that final thesis, it is they themselves who navigate the research field and formulate a problem, but as general as a general framework, inquiry-based learning shows how to take the students further in their learning to a process of greater and greater forms of inquiry. Concordantly, it's therefore not always appropriate to start with the most advanced form of inquiry, but to guide students towards increasing difficult, uh, ta more and more difficult tasks so that a progression in their learning can take place. As you understand, I cannot show examples from all the areas of teaching in higher education. Uh, you will therefore have to reflect on how and if these are applicable within your own field. However, uh, during this lecture, this in this video, then I will sometimes illustrate what I'm talking about by using a, a, te a teaching in a course in chemistry as an example, and also a course that uh, studies text in some regards. As you can imagine, that this course in the history of ideas or another course within the liberal arts. Anyways, the first form of inquiry uh, that can be described as confirmation inquiry. This means that the teacher teaches a specific team to create deeper learning. The teacher then develops a task where the students have to go through a procedure where the end result is already known by the teacher. Here we might imagine a chemistry teacher asking students to conduct an experiment with its own different substances. The teacher gives instructions of what to do and then asks them to present the results of their experiment. The teacher knows what the results are going to be, but anyways, the, the idea is that the students find this result for themselves. Similarly, we can imagine a teacher in any subject asking students to read on paper and then to well, this man in that students has to read a paper or a book and then just summarize it. Here we can imagine that there are different interpretations of that text that might be possible, but at the same time, their summary should also be consistent with an interpretation that is more or less obvious. In particular, if the teacher gives them clear instructions on how to summarize a the text, then the outcome of their summary is more likely to be the same as the teacher's. So the advantage of this form of inquiry is that it creates a deeper understanding of the theme being discussed and provides the students with knowledge on how to go about understanding and producing knowledge. But advancing, the second form of inquiry can be described as a structured inquiry. As with the first form of inquiry, the teacher gives instructions to the students, but the focus is now not so much on finding an answer to the problem. Instead, it's to make observations about what is happening and, and to make careful notes about your finding. It's about the process, basically. For example, they could do several experiments, each collecting information about what the different processes do. Uh, or perhaps you could ask students to summarize knowledge about a particular topic, for example, by doing a research review. This form of inquiry does give students additional responsibility and a little more freedom and allows them to be active in the data collection. However, students are also still expected to follow a certain structure in the search for knowledge. The third form of inquiry can be described as a guided inquiry. Here, the teacher provides less instructions and sticks primarily to presenting a research questions. question. The students themselves then have to take responsibility for designing and developing an approach to answer that particular question. Returning to our example of chemistry, we can imagine that the teacher asks the students to study how substances react in a vacuum. The hope is, here is that they will know how to make to, to do each measurement, uh, having already done so by having the, have already practiced doing so. When the teacher asks them to practice these methods in previous forms of inquiry. Uh, Turning to our other example of uh, the study of literature, 
Here, the teacher may ask students to answer a question, perhaps how, let's say, how goodness is presented to within the literature of ancient Greece. Students must now develop a strategy to answer that question. So they're asking themselves which literature that is the most relevant. Is there other literature, previous research, for example, that talks about this? These are all relevant inquiry questions. Regardless, regardless, the aim is to get students to develop a strategy for acquiring knowledge themselves while the teacher has a more passive role. However, as to the extent that students get stuck, there are reasons to provide additional help. As a rule, however, students should find ways to answer these questions for themselves. Then, the last form of inquiry can be described as open inquiry. This is the final goal of inquiry-based learning. Here, students take full control of the progress process of inquiry and develop their own question and research strategy. Most often, this is seen when they're writing their final thesis. This form of inquiry is most often perceived as the final proof that students have succeeded in becoming independent inquirers when they themselves are in control of the research process and can seek knowledge and solutions to the problems and questions they themselves are able to identify. So, these were four examples of how progression of learning can occur in inquiry-based learning. In reality, it can, again, vary uh, depending on the field and the course. But these are at least four forms of inquiry that are relevant when talking about inquiry-based learning. What you can see, however, uh, what needs to be said that independent of which field we are talking about, when talking about inquiry-based learning, it tends to fall on the, on the five phases, so contain five phases, either all five or some of them. So in the next video, I will be talking about these five inquiry phases. So see you there.